So this was obviously a huge win for you. This is uh, going to put you up right up there with some of the top competitors in the welterweight division. Would you think that? I would think that, but you never know. You never know what they're thinking, so we'll, we'll see. Um, I'm just happy to get the win. I'm not happy the way I earned the win. I, I felt like I, I should have done a lot better. Uh, I started late, but I finished strong. So. You just credit that to Rick Story's ability to grind and his tenacity? Yeah, he, he made me step up and have to win that fight because um, I was on the way out, and um, he put the pressure on me, so I had to hit him hard and try to make him respect me, and I did, and he started backing off, and, and I started to control the fight from there. What do you think it is that you had a slow start? Um, I, I, I did not plan on having such a slow start, but he knocked the hell out of me right <laughs> off the, at the beginning, and it took me a while to get back, uh, you know, uh, you know, I have to look at the video, but I think he did it to me in the second round too, maybe? I don't remember, but uh, I got I got hit again and stunned me, and um, I, I just wasn't able to shake it off until the middle of the second, and then by the time the third come, you know, my corner's like, look, whoever wins this, this round wins, so you need to put the pressure on him. And I could hear my corner, you know, my corner told me, if, if we ever feel like it's time for you to put the pressure, I'm going to tell you to, and then please listen to me. And, and do that and uh, and I could hear him saying he put the pressure because he started to get a little tired and the punches that he was throwing wasn't hard uh, they were hard but they weren't as hard as they were and I was I knew that I was able to take those and, that, and so that I could get off on them and uh, I think that you know gave me the nod but so, I'm not happy with it. Yeah, was there some surprise or I shouldn't say surprise what was your kind of reaction when the scorecards were being read was there some uh, anticipation and I, I, you know I knew it could go either way uh, I, I wasn't I wouldn't have been surprised if I lost and uh, I wouldn't have been surprised if I won I was expecting either one and you know story story um, he's one of my hardest fights I've had in, in UFC um, and he I give credit to him he pushed he pushed the pace and made me have to fight and um, that, that was a great fight it was a good learning lesson for me do you think you're still improving? I know every time you fight Joe Rogan, Dana, they always keep saying this guy is getting older, but he seems to be getting better. Do you see it that way? I do. I do. Um, I'm just a late bloomer all the way around, you know, even though I've been in the business for 13 years. Uh, I love it. I, lo I love what the sport's all about, and I love where it's going, and I'm just happy to be a part of it, and I'm happy to be a part of the UFC. But why do you think it is that you're improving? Do you think it's your camp? Has your mentality changed? Something? Um, well... I would owe that to a change of, of coaches and, make, and making sure that I had a very uh, that I had a lot of attention on me. I know, it, you know, sometimes it's team sport and all that, but when it comes down to it, it's me in the cage. And I need for my camp, I need those guys coming in every day for me. So I hired those these guys for that to work with me, and that's it. You know, I don't need the, their focus on. 15 other guys that are running around and I get five, 10 minutes of their attention in that whole hour or two hours, you know, um, it's just something I've been missing. Some guys might not need that. I do. I like it. Um, and they spoke, they, uh, they, they pay special attention to me and making me better. And it, it's helped, it's helped me so much in this last year. Do you think about the rankings? Do you look at where you are? Do you feel like uh, this win moves you up? You know, like I say, you just never know what the UFC, um, has in mind. Uh, whomever makes, sits down and makes the top 10 list, I don't know who does that. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking. I, I don't have any control of that. My, my focus is getting to the gym, being the best that I can be, and trying to win fights. I can't, I can't be upset if this fight didn't put me in top 10 or if I didn't get the fight I want. It is what it is. I'm not, I, don't, I don't like to raise a lot of uh, stink or cause a lot of you know, trash talk, things like that. It's just not my personality. Um, that being gonna, said, though, is there somebody you'd like to ask for? Because, you know, a lot of time they do give you somebody if you really campaign for it. That's true. That is true. Um, I would I would have to sit down and think about that. There, there's plenty of guys that are a very good matchup for me that are in top ten. Um, I would, to answer that honestly right now, uh, I don't know. I have to, I have to look mm -hmm. at, at that and see who I think would be and, and, it, and if I didn't get that choice any top 10 would be just fine with me um I'm just I just want to be the best that I can be and, and like I say I love the sport and I, I just feel like I'm getting better and but I am getting older so I want to get it done you know I got a, I got a little baby on the way I have to 
you know, I got to make some money and make a, a future for us and my wife. So. Well, that's what I was just going to ask you. You feel any sense of urgency now to maybe get a fight quicker? It doesn't look like you took too much damage, but that as you get older, you know, time is running out. So. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about my health and and where my ability to be able to get to the gym and get another fight in in three months. Um, I feel great. I've been, my Dolce has really helped turn my life around and my, uh, my, my thought process, uh, my thought process on being a athlete all the time, not just in my camp, but all the time in the, in the gym. I'm always in the gym asking any of the guys. I'm always there. I'm always working. Um, I don't plan on backing off until one day I just, something just says, look, man, don't, uh, don't get out of bed today and do that. Let's just, let's call it. And that's, it hasn't even, it's not even in the back of my mind right now. You're seven and one in your last eight fights. And is that an attribute because you have switched camps perhaps and have some different coaches and the last four that you've won? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say because I switched camps. It's because I put focus on me. Doesn't matter where I was at. Doesn't matter if I was at Extreme. Doesn't matter if I was at Syndicate. Just that focus on me was one of the bigger was been one of the bigger problems for me. Not a problem. Just something that I was missing. Something that I felt like I needed, and just took me a, a while to you know just go ahead and, and and do it rather than you know wish that I did do it. You're talking about things that work for you. That the Tennessee waterfall has been working for a couple of years now. You're sticking with that hairdo. <laughs> yeah, why not? I mean, who else has a mullet besides uh, Roy? You know what I mean. We're the only ones rocking a mullet. I think mine's better. <laughs> I think so. Um, it's much more quaffed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no offense, it's country. You got a good one though. Um, but no, I, it's just I, I'm, I'm I'm a country boy, and that's all there is to it. I grew up with a mullet. I grew up with guys that had mullets, mullets and uh, and. Uh, Thunderbirds. Yes. Okay, so that's just who I am. I'm country all the way, and I, I love rocking my mullet. Yeah. When, when you decide to cut it, you should just go with like the rat tail, like go real old school country. I would never <laughs> cut the mullet. I'll do it with a rat tail. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just want to ask you know, you were at Extreme. Mm -hmm. um, and as going forward, I get this feeling that super camps are kind of going to phase out in the way of boxing, whereas we're going to kind of go to specialized camps. Would you agree with that? I, I would concur. I think that would be the best move for some of the bigger athletes um it's good now don't get me wrong i had great time and uh growing up in this sport and when you have uh, a lot of good guys in the gym you feed off of that you le you learn off of that you you get in there and you get that you get in that atmosphere where you're learning from some of the older guys and you and you're you're getting your you're getting your ass kicked by these older guys and that's you're either going to come back or you're not all right so you get better you you grow along with it with the team and then when it comes down to it and you got an eight-week camp going on you talk to your guys and you say all right look i know that you take care of the our young guys coming up but i'm going to need you every day at seven and you set that up and you make sure that you're getting what you need and and everybody's happy and still those young bucks are still coming up and, and getting to learn and everybody's in at the same time but you take your time and you learn, you, you get better and you craft your skills that you've learned and you get that special attention that you need from your coaches. So yes, I, I believe that's very much so gonna happen that way, it should. You know, you, you look at tennis players and things like that, they're, they, got their, they got their guy right there. You know, they don't have 15 guys, you know, trying to serve all at the same time, everybody's sharing the same. No, you're in there, you're working specifically on the things that you need to do. And uh, it, for me, it's helped me tenfold. Thank you. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats.